In this week's video I will talk about uh, anterolateral ankle impingement and how it presents on MRI. This video is the second part of the ankle impingement series and if you haven't watched the anterior ankle impingement I suggest you click the link in the description down below or somewhere up here but only after watching this video. Anterolateral ankle impingement has this abbreviation ALI and these are the two things that come to my mind if I hear that so I thought this was kind of funny that's why I included it here in this presentation. So what is anterolateral ankle impingement anyways? Now as with anterior ankle impingement it's technically a clinical diagnosis more or less and patients have pain at this region here anterolaterally of the ankle joint and typically they have some kind of an injury, it can be months, weeks or years ago, then there is some hypertroph scarring going on or maybe some synovitis that leads to some kind of a mass effect or space occupying lesion at this region in this so-called anterolateral gutter. And this mass that's normally not there uh, is then causing problems because if you dorsiflex your foot then it gets impinged here in this anterolateral gutter and this is causing discomfort and pain and limited range of motion. So this is anterolateral ankle impingement in a nutshell. So what is the anterolateral gutter that I referred to here previously? Now here we can see a patient and the patient has this marker here so he has pain here at this level and you can see the anterolateral gutter here zoomed in a little bit on this scan. So I'm going to show it here because it's probably easier to see. So this is the distal fibula, this is the Taylor dome and this space here, basically this region here, just below the anterior syndesmosis and above the ATFL or also inside of the ATFL and above the uh, fibrocalcaneal ligament. This is basically the anterolateral gutter shown here. So if you have any kind of mass like synovitis or like scar tissue or maybe even a ganglion cyst or anything like it, this can lead to anterolateral impingement. Now here in this diagram, just quickly uh, give you uh, the quick anatomy repetition. If you want to know more about these different kind of ligaments, I suggest you go and watch my corresponding videos where I give a detailed presentation on how to identify these kind of ligaments. Um, and you can find the link to these videos in the description down below or up here in, in this card that should be coming up here anytime soon. So basically um, this white mass here is indicating this uh, space occupying lesion into anterolateral gutter. So the anterior syndesmosis has these different portions here and the most inferior portions here or this most inferior portion is sometimes called Bassett's ligament although it's not really an accessory ligament it's just a normal portion of the anterior syndesmosis and that's why basically everybody has it so if it's very prominent sometimes people still tend to call it Bassett's ligament but well anyways it's not really important it's just really important to know that if you have some kind of uh, ATF telt here with this hypertroph scarring or thickening after an older injury. You can have some synovitis here and then you get this lesion there. On the other hand, you can also have like a thick Bassett's ligament, maybe even also after a trauma with some hypertrophy or synovitis, and then you can have the same symptoms. So this is basically the space where we are looking for some kind of pathology here in this anterolateral gutter. Okay, so what are we actually looking for? And what we are looking for is synovial hypertrophy in the anterolateral gutter, which can be seen as a uh, intermediate to low signal intensity within the anterolateral gutter there. And if you have like this chronic synovial tissue that gets frequently or repetitively impinged, it can get pretty dark and form something that in the literature is called a neomeniscus or a meniscoid lesion there. But it's just like um, very scarred tissue plate from chronic synovial uh, tissue impingement. Other things you can look out for is like scarring, like if you have a thick scar that is not the ATFL and not the anterior syndesmosis, or if you have some kind of joint capsule adhesions in this anterolateral gutter, I will show you an example later. And be mindful that the thickening of the ATFL is an associated finding and you can have thickening of the ATFL without impingement obviously, but this is just an association because it reflects the initial initiating trauma if you will. 
So this is from a, a recent publication by Tsubonjevic, I hope I said this correctly. And this is just a normal anatomy, again, reflecting here on the anterolateral gutter, where you have this kind of recess here at the insertion of the joint capsule onto the fibula. And this recess here is normally visible if you have a large joint effusion or if you do MR orthography. Now, typically we don't do MR orthography in the ankle joint, so therefore its value is probably limited. Now, if you are looking for some kind of space occupying lesion in the anterolateral gutter, be very careful to not call things like that like like scar tissue or synovial hypertrophy. So really go and check on your non-fat saturated images because fat will look similar on this kind of uh, sequences here. So really you have to look at both, but we will see this in an example later on too. This is now from the same publication, a patient with anterolateral ankle impingement. And again, it shows you, if you just look on the PD fat set, you wouldn't really suspect much here. So the synovial tissue that you can clearly appreciate here, like this gray gray area is synovial hypertrophy. And also there is obliteration or an adhesion of this tissue here in this lateral recess here on the fibular recess of the anterolateral gutter. So we have this space occupying lesion here. And we are now at the level just below the anterior syndesmosis and above the ATFL. So this is where you have to look for. So be mindful to have a look at both of them. But actually, I could stop the presentation here now. MR's role typically is just to exclude any kind of other lesions, um, specifically osteochondral lesion of the lateral tailor dome, some bony changes, maybe uh, other ligament injury, etc. And not necessarily to make the diagnosis of anterolateral ankle impingement anyways. So let me just give you a quick repetition of the normal anatomy here. This is at the level of the anterior syndesmosis. You scroll down, you can see the most inferior portion is this so-called basset ligament, which is just the normal portion of the syndesmosis. Not really um, relevant unless it's very thick or so. So don't focus too much on the basset ligament. So this is kind of like the roof of the anterior, uh, of the anterolateral gutter. And if you scroll down, you can see this kind of uh, fluid filled space here, which is the anterolateral gutter. And the joint capsule is inserting here, not straight here on, on the edge of the fibula, but a little bit more on the lateral side. So that's this so-called recess that you can see if you have a lot of joint fluid or if you do an arthrogram. Now, this is the anterolateral gutter. If we scroll even more, distally, we can then see a normal ATFL, which is kind of like the floor of the anterolateral gutter, still here, a uh, portion of this uh, fluid filled space. And even if we go even more distally, then at some point there will be the LFC, which is kind of like the floor of the whole thing. So we are now looking for a suspicious finding in this region. Now let's have a look at the first patient. So this is now the first patient and it's a young woman and she had like a uh, ankle injury a few months ago i think at this point it was something like eight months ago and she had now this anterolateral pain and we are now at the same level here again and your syndesmosis we can see the different fibers are still intact we have this basset ligament in bracket so don't really care too much about it and so we are now if we go more distally we will then have the area where we are looking for pathology. And what we can now see, there's a lot of gray stuff going on here, right? In this anterolateral gutter, this is way too much. There shouldn't be this kind of uh, low signal structure here. And if we go even more distally, then we can see this very thick and um, uh, old injured ATFL, which is like scarred and thickened, etc. after an old rupture or tear. and if we go up again, we can see this space occupying lesion here, which is consistent with the patient's anterolateral ankle impingement, which was already suspected clinically. So this is now a very good finding. And they actually went in and did arthroscopy and uh, saw that there is synovitis in the anterolateral gutter and they just shaved it off and the patient was then getting better slowly over time. This is still the same patient, but this time it's just the um, fat saturated images and we can still see the syndesmosis, the so-called basset ligament. And if we scroll now here, you can see this gray stuff here, basically it's all this kind of synovitis here. And if you look here where we have the tip of the fibula here, there is like 
no recess visible and we still have quite some join diffusion so we would, would technically expect here to be some kind of a recess although this sign alone is probably not the best i would say and then again you can see the old tear of the atfl with some synovial hypertrophy or hypertrophic scarring etc here at this region so here is another patient and as you can see with the marker here has anterolateral pain and limited range of motion was the clinical information that we got and if we start at the top we can see the anterior syndesmosis is okay but the most inferior portion there is some thickening there is some this very gray stuff probably some synovitis here and then there is some not clear fluid there seems to be a little bit of synovitis and probably a little bit pronounced here in this anterolateral gutter but it's not yet really like mess like um, you don't have this impression but if we go even further down you can see this thickened and hypertroph atfl after an old tear but actually what about this one here you can see there is like this thick scar plate here in the anterolateral region and if you look closely there is like this fascia is going down here and there seems to be some kind of a stripping of this fascia of the um, of the fibular head here of the fibular head so if we go back to the normal case that i showed you uh, and if we compare this like with this one here so anterior syndesmosis here we kind of have this fascia running straight onto the bone here and this is atfl we don't have this kind of stripping so i think this is a a mimicker of anterolateral ankle impingement or something that can also explain anterolateral ankle pain and you can see this here all the way down and technically i think it should end up here like it should insert here so i think with this hypertroph mass here or this scar plate it's still consistent with anterior ankle impingement should the patient have this kind of symptoms and this particular one had but i think it's also worth mentioning findings like this and be very careful to look out for these I haven't found a paper about this, so if you have any information or a study that is dealing with this kind of thing, I would be happy to have it. So this brings me to the last patient, and also this patient had persisting anterolateral ankle pain after a trauma a few weeks or months ago, and they, quer they were querying for like basset ligament or some kind of other reason for anterolateral ankle impingement. And so I think in the initial report, the radiologist reported the basset ligament, which was marked as this one here, which is probably not the basset ligament, but it would actually be like the most inferior portion, this one here. But anyway, it's just like a normal anterior syndesmosis, so it doesn't really matter. And if we go even more distally, now if you look here, we have this thickened structure here, there is no recess, we have a little bit of a fusion, there seems to be some synovitis going on here in the anterolateral uh, gutter here. There is still some fatty tissue, but if we go further down, you can see we don't really see an ATFL anymore. So there was a, a tear of the ATFL. And as in the previous case, look what's going on here. We have this scar plate here, just ventral or anteriorly of the, the fibular, fibular head. And there seems also to be some kind of stripping either of the fascia or maybe it's still portion of some of the retinacula of the ankle joint. And this might actually be also contributing to persisting pain here because you have this chronic traction and then you get these kind of changes there. So always be very mindful to have a look out for these ones here. Similar to with the fascial sleeve of the medial malleolus, uh, as I also uh, have shown you in another video. So to summarize, anteroanterolateral ankle impingement is a clinical diagnosis and MR's indication is typically to rule out other findings, but you can see findings in the anterolateral gutter that are explaining the patient's symptoms too. So this kind of synovitis or hypertroph tissue in the anterolateral gutter. So look out for this. And don't forget to look at the fascia or this kind of retinaculum insertion onto the fibular tip because we frequently see this kind of stripping there. Although I don't have any kind of literature to back this up. So this is just a personal uh, observation there. Go check out my Patreon page if you want to get more involved. And also go check out my homepage, msk.actin.org, where you find links to all my teaching uh, material in one place. And with that, I'd like to thank you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.